So it took me a while to get to a point where I stop overthinking of things and just enjoy the freedom of going at it without any pre-plans. Hello folks, this is Citria, C-E-T-R-I-Y-A, and welcome to my art channel. And I just wanted to come with just an, you know, a... Uh, just a little chat while I create this lovely image. And actually, this is an image featuring one of several YouTube creators and artisans and, you know, other people who create beautiful things that has been inspiring me lately. And part of the reason why I'm coming to you with this particular chat, and that is how I learn to love doing art again. If you are new to my channel, then you don't know already that my day job is actually creating art on demand for retail products. But before then, it was creating art based on what kind of grades I will get on assignment. And before then, it was just using art as a form of communication, a kind of, you know, getting from point A to point B sort of transactional creation. It wasn't actually Let's just say I was never that and still kind of not that artist where it just bubbles up from my insides and it ends up on the canvas. I was never that kind of artist. And to this day, I am actually kind of jealous, wondering that kind of mysterious, magical feeling that a lot of creatives have when they get into the flow of just doing whatever inspires them. In fact, I'll share you a little story. When I was at my uh, counselor, my guidance counselor at college, you know, career counselor, one of those people, and they were just discussing about the method of which I use for creating illustration. And honestly, I don't actually start with a drawing in my head. I actually start very logically, um, almost like a math equation. I think about what am I going to use, like the materials I'm going to use. The size that of the paper of canvas that I'm going to be using, if it's not digital, uh, where this artwork's going to end on. So maybe like on products or book covers or just like a sketch or illustration. And then who would like this artwork? Like the person, the type of person or personality that I was guessing and assuming, what would they like? And then what kind of emotion that I want someone to read from the art. Again, using art more so as a language versus a personal self-expression and having fun with it. And after that, I actually would just write a whole list of words. No drawing, no thoughts in my mind, nothing like that. Just a whole list of words of just keywords like um, I want it to be awe ah, and bold. So then I'd write bold, red, uh, bright, shiny, uh, you know, high energy, like those kind of just generic words. And then from there, there is quite a bit of like study about color psychology, cultural, um, cultural examples of what colors work where. Um, pretty much if you go into like the study of advertisement, you will see that there's quite a bit of formula when it comes to things like that. Um, adding in color theory, color psychology, composition theory, composition psychology. It goes pretty, I mean, it, it gets actually quite systematic, which is so funny when people come to me and they, of course, they find joy in the artwork. I'm glad. I don't want to make artwork that you don't enjoy or can't speak to, but you can, t I feel it's a, it's a different form of imposter syndrome. In my case, I don't feel like an imposter. I feel like a more of like a fraud and it sounds funny because in my case it's not just me not being sure about myself but more so that I am intentionally um, constructing this image from uh, a lack of a better way of expressing it a weird sense of algorithm but here's the funny thing about us as humans and why as much as we like to write in sci-fi stories about robots replacing human beings um, or, you know, artificial intelligence replacing certain jobs or creative fields and why it's actually quite difficult to do. And that is the more systematic approach that I had towards my arc, the more I just kind of got numb to it. So 
you might be thinking, how can an artist or creative person get numb to it? And I think this is definitely a topic where I feel more and more of us need to actually talk about and make it very distinctly different from burnout because I was never burnt out. Um, more so, it's like, for, well, let me track back a bit. But if I am creating art in a systematic approach, it's set up to where it's very difficult for me to be burnt out if I make if I'm making sense right like let's say you go into math class and you have to fill out all of these equations you know the formula and you're gonna sit down and you're gonna fill out every equation because you have the formulas for them the only thing is just that it just might physically get a bit tiring or it's just tedious or you're just disconnected because i mean there's not much of an emotional attachment to math unless you're you know going into like physics or whatever and actually creating something with the use of the math but if you're just following formulas there's nothing great about it and for a long while now since i'm pretty settled with my job um, or my actual profession because i've had several jobs within that profession I would come home and kind of sort of physically tired, kind of sort of just but realizing it's a mental drain because I was basically filling out math formulas the whole day and I equated me filling out math formulas, but I'm not. I'm drawing art on demand using a mental use of, you know, creating it in a list and logical basis, just filling out orders. They send me an email. I fill out the order kind of thing that I was confusing that to actually creating or drawing art. Not that it's not art, but that it was art to me, how I personally feel about it. And because of that, it kind of gave me this weird justification of why I would just come home and be a couch potato. Now, there's nothing wrong with coming and resting, especially on a long day if something was mentally taxing. There's nothing wrong, but eventually time will keep passing by and you come, you just have a couple of days where you just kind of like, why, what, what's the point of me keep doing this? Like, what's the point of me keep doing anything that I'm doing? There's not, there's not, I've come to realize that my lack of self-expression just made it difficult for me to participate I guess is a way of of describing it um and it just uh it's hard to like put the lack of having feelings into words to describe it as though it's like a feeling when it's just the lack of having feeling just the lack of having motivation to do so and funny enough while we just had the chance to just take a pause, you know, and it wasn't a good pause. It was forced on us, right? We, a lot of us aren't, didn't make it out well, but I just started to like, I had more rest. That's, that's the biggest thing. I was able to actually think more in clarity. I didn't realize how sleep deprived I was, but I sat there and I created just some sketch. I didn't know what I was going to create, Um, That was something else is like letting go of that systematic control of this is how an art's going to end up. It was just I came to a picture. I grabbed whatever tools that I had. I grabbed whatever colors that I have. And I just went at it. I just went at it. Just started putting markings on the picture. Halfway through a marking, it doesn't look right. So I'll just start on another and just keep going until eventually I, I get to the finish line. And I end up with art that is not... It wasn't planned, so I don't know what to expect. And it looks good at the end. I'm proud of it with all of its mistakes. Because again, just the act of freely letting your mind relax into making the art versus constantly analyzing and constantly, you know, criticizing every little bit of mistake or something's a little off here and there. It was freeing. And then I'd come in the next day, you know, I let the art sit for a bit and look at it. And yeah, I could see the mistakes, but more than anything, I actually can see just a personal sense of joy that's captured in a moment on canvas. So after all that, 
I've been doing it a few times. If you haven't catch me in a live stream, I've done a couple of those. And then I would just sit um, on a quiet, you know, weekend day now that I'm back in the office. And I just, I felt like I had extra energy in my hands and I grabbed me some paper, whatever size. I don't think about the size or the placement. And the only thing I think to myself is, will this be in color or will this not be in color? And will this be watercolor or will it not be watercolor? Uh, because that does affect the paper you choose. And after that, I just go at it. Just go and allow my mind to freely express itself. And now that I have a space where I could just create to my heart's content, actual feeling an attachment to creating work, I've noticed that my mind has been very much open to seeing things differently. I don't just see things as, will this sell? Will this not sell? Will this work? Will this not work? Will this get approved by, you know, my bosses or will it not approve? Is this trending? No, I just enjoy just consuming the beauty that is around me, especially since I'm a highly cynical person, but absorbing that. And then now and then I just pop up and be like, oh, this is beautiful. This is nice. I like this. I have like a million billion screen caps in just this year alone of all these things that I've seen, um, whether it's on the internet or taking photos myself, just going about or things like that. And you, you to think it's the weirdest thing because sometimes they like the weirdest crop, but just being open to being inspired and not having that mental block. Not having that mental block and creating things that I see and not have to worry that Am I going to use this for something, quote unquote, profitable or productive? You, you know, not using my art as a means to an end a product. And because of this, things that I would not have seen before that would be invisible to me are starting to make themselves known. And if you have been following my community tab, you'll notice that I have posted quite a bit of just things that inspire me or where I get my, you know, inspirations and design taste from. And some of my loyal subscribers, you guys have been loving it and I'm glad and I hope that it has inspired you to draw something just for the hell of it because... I truly am coming to understand just how much it's actually a blessing that I actually have something that is personal to me that makes me feel good and it doesn't cost me that much. Yeah, you can be bougie buying really expensive markers or whatnot, but you don't really need to do that just to make art for yourself. It's just, it's just, really, it just feels really good. I feel really good. I do feel really good about it and I'm glad that with a lot of a couple of comments that really tells the difference that oh you know your stuff has a different set of you know energy emotion or I've been really loving the stuff that you've been doing before even though I think personally I'm not making anything all that new or revolutionary but I think yeah people can really tell when there's a human behind something that is being created. So that is really my, my heart to heart way of trying to describe this kind of like not so solid, but kind of abstract way. Cause that's what us artists do, right? We do, we talk about things in abstraction. That's why in this feature, I drew the lovely Chimdi. She is one of several YouTubers that are kind of expressing something similar to what I've expressed in this chat and just finding the love of something again that maybe subconsciously or consciously you put it in the back burner because you're trying to be, you know, a productive adult, but realizing that this is the part that you need to nurture. And it shows, it just, it's just expressed. And from there, I'm just basically taking up this energy and putting it back out into this lovely image and if you haven't seen her channel, I would say go and take a look. Go check her out. If you love good 
just good energy but realistic energy because we're all adults here well if you're not an adult <laughs> um you'll eventually become an adult but yeah go and check her stuff out because first off just this uh, like i said this the videos just look beautiful and i think she's a beautiful person and if you haven't seen my previous artwork i love to draw beautiful things and beautiful people so of course i would Hope you do enjoy this little chat. Let me know your thoughts below. Let me know really what have been something that you couldn't really express and maybe you could express it in the comments. And feel free to write down a whole paragraph if you want because I will read them. I read them quite a bit at work, ironically. Links to Chimdi's channel will be found in the descriptions below along with links to my shop if you're interested in my work other than that i hope you guys had a pleasant interesting and sketch along time with me all the best and i will see you all in the next video